spaces as well. We did have a question come in, and so I want to address the question. And this time I remembered to have my handy spectacles. So this will be a little easier than last time. So the question that's been presented, it says, if you have worship and pray every day and go to church to worship God on Sunday, will God be okay with it? If not, why not? Well, a couple of questions. Let me, let me respond with a couple of questions. How many of you believe that it's probably a very positive thing to pray and read our Bibles every day? Right? And so, obviously, I would refer to those as spiritual disciplines. In fact, I might even use the example of a three-legged stool. Right? Pretty good visual. When you think of a three-legged stool, can that stool stand up if one of those legs are taken away? Right? So they are interdependent upon one another. And I would actually assert to you that there are three legs of spiritual discipline in the Christian life. I cannot have a relationship with God if I don't talk to Him. Right? If I'm not praying, if I'm not lifting up my heart to Him. I'm not going to understand His will for my life if I'm not reading His Word. If I'm not spending time in what Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, that the Word of God is living and active. Some translations say living and powerful. But they all converge with the same translation to say that it's sharper than what? Any two-edged sword and it's able to pierce down to the very heart of who we are. But also there's a third part. Because a lot of Christians, many Christians, are good at prayer and reading their Bible, but then they kind of drop the ball sometimes on that third spiritual discipline. And that's the second part of being a disciple. And I've been kind of dinging us on that, right? It's not just embracing the teachings of the teacher, it's then telling other people about the teacher and his teachings. And so we've got to give a witness in some way. Uh, we've got to share. Um, I, I won't pull up the verse, but I'll, I'll point you to it. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11 says that they, those who are rescued from sin were saved by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. So I have to be covered by the blood of Christ, but that word of the testimony, that's a, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Pastor, I was fine until you told me I had to say something for Jesus. Well, that's what it means to be a witness. So, so to answer kind of the first part of this question, should we be involved in those spiritual disciplines every day? Yeah, to some degree, right? And I know some days are busier than others. You may not have a lot of time to pray, but live in a spirit of prayer. Talk to God throughout the day. Have that ongoing conversation. In fact, I don't think that we should just say, okay, amen, I'm done with prayer. They should say, amen, Lord, I'll talk to you in a second. And they just talk to God throughout the day. Fill your mind with Scripture. Say, well, I don't have time to read. If you have any amount of commute going to work or coming home from work, put the Bible on audio. Listen to it. There are a lot of dramatized versions that will even have sound effects that are not overly dramatic, but they're nice. They add some ambiance to the story. And then just pray for divine appointments. Okay? So that's, that's the first part. And then she talks about, or I believe it was a lady who asked me the question. I don't know specifically. But it's legible handwriting, so I think it's a lady. <laughs> Picking on my guys. This is, and if I go to church on Sunday, will, will God not be okay with that? We talked about the other day, remember I took you to the Ten Commandments. You remember we looked at that? And you remember in that first commandment, we talked about how when God said, have no other gods before me, He was calling us to allow Him to have the place, and I used a P word. Do you remember that P word? Let's see how attentive. This is your pop quiz. Close, it starts with pre. Preeminence. Right? So preeminence, that place of first affection. Let's, let's think of that. When God says, you shall have no other gods before me, He's saying, I want the place of first affection in your heart. Does that sound reasonable, yes or no? Okay, but then we get to the fourth commandment, and it says something very specific. It says six days. I remember I gave you the illustration of my father-in-law, who told me he thought I was a biblical Christian when I was complaining about working six days a week. And he said, six days shall you labor, 
But then it said, the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Jews. Is that what we read? It was the Sabbath of the Seventh-day Baptists. It said that the Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Church of God Seventh Day. Is that what it said? Did it say that the Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? No, what did we read? The Seventh Day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. And so God has laid a claim on a specific day that He has called us to special worship. Should I have daily worship? Absolutely. I would be a fool as a pastor to tell you, no, I only worship God one day a week. No, I'm not calling you to be a weekend warrior for God. I'm calling you to be a disciple of Christ. Amen? Open your Bibles with me. I want to take you to an example of where good got in the way of best. I want to go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis what? Genesis chapter 4, and if you're using one of the blue pew Bibles, that starts on page 11. When you're there, give me an amen. If you need more time, say have mercy. I'm waiting on you. Genesis chapter 4. Page 11 in the blue hymn Bible, or yeah, pew Bibles. All right, so here we go. Now, Adam knew his wife Eve. Knew is a fancy Bible term meaning that he had conjugal relations with her. He knew her intimately. He knew her sexually. And she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother who? Now, Abel was a what? A keeper of sheep, and Cain was a? Okay, verse 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought what? An offering. Okay, Cain was not loading up for the local farmer's market. You understand the context of what we're doing here, right? This is in the, this is in the context of God has called for offerings to be rendered to him. Okay, so now Cain is, is, is responding to what God has asked him to do. He's bringing his offering. Let's check out his offering. Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Question for you. How many of you think that that was some of the best, most, most organic produce that you could imagine? I'm going to tell you what Whole Foods would be clamoring for, for Cain's produce. Best available. Guaranteed. Right? Let's continue. Abel also brought of the what? Firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And what was, what was God's response? And the Lord what? Respected Abel. Now, we read later on in the New Testament that God is no respecter of persons. And when, when Paul wrote that, he was saying that God doesn't show preferential treatment over people. But there's a reason God is able to, the Bible is able to say that the Lord respected Abel in his offering, but he did not, verse 5 says, respect Cain in his offering. Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. Notice what the Lord says to him in verse 6. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? Question for you. Was God asking Cain this question because he was oblivious as to what was going on? No. No. God asks these types of questions to cause us to think through why we're acting the way that we're acting. Okay, same thing that we often do with our children. Why did you do that? Why did you take that toy away? I know why they took it away, because they're selfish and they didn't want the other kid playing with their toy. Okay, but I'm asking so that they can recognize that what they did was out of harmony with how to live together. Right? How to have a spirit of sharing. So God is asking Cain that type of question. If you do what, verse 7, you will be, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, what lies at the door? Sin. Friends, here's my point. There was nothing wrong with Cain's produce. Is that fair, yes or no? The problem with the produce 
It's not what God asked for. So when it comes to worship, remember our status. What is our status? Are we creator? Are we creation? We are that which has been created. Who is greater? Creator. So in that relationship in which we have entered in, in which we exist, who has the authority to dictate what worship looks like? The Creator who has called His creation to worship Him. And so I believe the answer to this question is pretty simple for me. Is God okay if I worship on a day, she's put Sunday, but I, I might say, well, Tuesday's more convenient for me. Tuesdays are open, I can take all day Tuesday. We know from the way the calendar is set up that Tuesday's not the seventh day. And I'll be honest with you, if the seventh day of the week was Tuesday, Thomas, do you think I would care? Why would I? Right? If Wednesday, Maggie, were the seventh day, do you think I would care that it's Wednesday? I have no preference. Here's my preference. I want to walk with Jesus. I want to be a disciple of Christ. And so we're going to get a fuller answer. I'm actually going to unpack this topic over this weekend. It starts, I'm going to set the foundation for it this evening. And then tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening, we're going to break this wide open. So we're going to get a fuller answer. But I want us to just be reminded, there are good things... But there's also what God asked for. There's nothing wrong with Cain's produce. It just wasn't what God asked for. And God rejected Cain's sacrifice, his offering, not because it wasn't good, but because it was inappropriate. Are you following with me? Does that make sense tonight, yes or no? All right. Well, if you have other questions, um, I will do my very best to try to give you a biblical answer. You're welcome to fill out those cards. Um, even if it's a question that that you think maybe, maybe everybody else might benefit from hearing, fill it out. Turn it into your row host or you can hand it directly to me and I'll be happy to do my best to answer that. All right.